Hi. Welcome, everyone. Hi, everybody. Hope you're having a good Friday so far. Uh. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure some of you have heard the news. Um. <clears throat> about Toriyama. That makes me sad to hear. Um. So I hope everyone is doing well in spite of that. You did? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, like... Literally everybody that I follow on Twitter has said something about it. Like, they said something about it, like, within, within the hour. Ah! Thank you for the cheer up, Dark Moon. <laughs> okay, but yeah, yeah. It's 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 difficult to understate like how much of an impact that Dragon Ball had, like in terms of like making it making anime in, like like an inter an international sensation. Like I'm trying to think of what the landscape would be like in animation, not just in animation, but in like gaming and everything today, uh, if Dragon Ball did not exist. I mean, there, there'd there be other anime shows, like, you know, like Speed Racer and Sailor Moon and all that. But, like, Dragon Ball is what made it really pop off in countries outside of Japan. Hey, rest in peace, Toriyama. You left such an impact on me and my brothers that I will not stop with my own passions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and one of my friends, um, who uh, is Latin American, um, yeah, he was kind of talking about it, too. Um... In like in like the groups or in in the Discord server for our game project, and yeah, like like Dragon Ball is huge in um, Latin America, especially Mexico. Like, some would argue it's even more popular there than in Japan. So I can't imagine that what everybody there is feeling like right now too. Yeah, plus all of the video games that Toriyama's worked on, like Dragon Quest, for example. Um, and without Dragon Ball, we would not have um, so many other cool like 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 spins on the concept. You know, like like the one that immediately comes to my mind is Super Sonic. <laughs> Imagine if Dragon Ball was never a thing, but Sonic the Hedgehog like continued on. What would what would they decide to do other than Super Sonic? Yeah, Sonic's not like directly create uh, related. But it's so obvious that Super Sonic is based on Super Saiyan. <laughs> and I wonder if the concept of collecting like like seven legendary artifacts with, uh, in the Chaos Emeralds was in any way based on collecting the Dragon Balls. No Dragon Crest means no Dream Team and no Dream Team means no Chrono Trigger. <laughs> oh my goodness. Right, right, right. Uh, Toriyama did do artwork for Chrono Trigger. I, I forgot about that. Tara! Hi! Bat! Hope you're doing well, Bat Buddy. Well, we're just reminiscing about some of our favorite Toriyama works. <laughs> How was the stream yesterday? Oh, it was good. Um, I wanted to beat the, the game 100% yesterday, but I didn't have time. Um, so I figured that I would continue with uh, Diddy Kong Racing um, for, for today. Um, we had just beaten the, the, the first round of the dragon boss. So all we have to do is a silver coin challenge um, in the dragon area and then beat the boss again and then the trophy race and then we can fight Wizpig. Um, I'm guessing maybe it'll take like a couple hours at most. And then if um, I get done well before my usual end time, we can um, wrap, pivot to, pi to pixel art, wrap things up that way. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, um, so that's it. Oh my goodness. Yeah, and I have so many, uh, I have so many voice acting friends who, like, grew up with Dragon Ball. Um, some of them have even gone on to voice in Dragon Ball. Uh, like my friend Dawn, for example, who voiced Lilac in Freedom Planet, she voices Kale, uh, and by extension Kefla. And, um, my friend Sayu, who voices Mayor Zhao in Freedom Planet, uh, among many, many other things, he also voices, um, Shallot in the mobile game. 
Rob Rauner gifted a tier yeah. 1 sub to Micah Briner. They have given 123 gift subs in the channel. Thank you, Rob, for the gifted subby. Thank you. You wonder what Akira's pupil, pupil Toyotaro will do from now on? He was certainly big shoes to fill. Mm. Oh, same old Neon, hi! Welcome back. Today too, grateful to hide here. Yeah, yeah. It's a it's a pretty it'll be a pretty chill day today, I think. Yeah, yeah. I just I kind of feel like the melancholy atmosphere, like around social media. So hopefully this is a way for all of us to kind of like wind down and forget about it for a few hours. Or at least like focus on the positives, just like celebrating um celebrating like their life rather than mourning it. Yeah, Dawn did post a very nice tweet about him. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Edge. It is kind of wild to think about how much he ended up influencing just, like, pop culture, almost. In terms of, like, in terms of, like, the direction of just, like, you know, like, 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 you, you think, you think of characters that have, like, influenced just, like, human civilization overall because they were so popular, you think of, the, you know, like, Superman or Spider-Man or Batman, or, um, and also Goku. Goku's right up there with the greats. Right alongside Batman's, uh, Superman, Mickey Mouse. Yeah, yeah, it, like, exactly, apps. the very concept of comparing power levels has been brainwormed into everybody. <laughs> Uh, I think my very first experience with Dragon Ball, because I didn't grow up with the series. It was around the time I was a teenager. Um, and I was just like seeing like, like internet discourse online about power levels. <laughs> like my first exposure to Dragon Ball was like the over 9,000 meme, I guess. Um, and then I also found out around that time, um, that the time that the Pokemon anime was, um, was like the very like the very first po Pokemon anime. Like people were mentioning that like um, the folks who worked on Dragon Ball Z also worked on Pokemon. That's kind of where I found out about it first. Yeah, yeah. Basically, every time you have a character who has who has like a glowing transformation, it is basically a Dragon Ball reference. Uh, <clears throat> oh, you work at a bookstore, Mike. Yeah, that, that makes me curious. If I were to drive down to, like, the local Barnes & Noble or any other, like, bookstore, if they would have, like, a tribute. Explains the hard angle faces in Pokemon. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, the Kanto Gen 1. Very, the very first one that came over to the U.S. Um, let me take Sippy. Hmm. Hmm. But yeah, like, even today, just, like, it can even, like, its influence can even be felt in the kind of, like, story beats that you see in a lot of, like, video games and anime. Like, it was, like, one of the first, like, like, well-known, like, like, examples of shounen anime. And, y y you know, like, like, Freedom Planet 2, like, between its story and some of its voice actors, we have a lot to think. Um, Toriyama for in terms of everything that led up to, to that game's like story being created. So I'm I'm quite grateful. Yes, yes, of course, Dragon Quest 2. The most important RPG in gaming history. Yeah. Oh yeah, that is a good point, Edge Drive. This year's Dia de los Muertos is going to be uh very interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, joking, but also serious. Yeah, you, you know, you know. I do appreciate that about um about Dia de los Muertos. It, it it like kind of focuses on the positive aspect of death in terms of like it like just like remember people and celebrate what they did in life and 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 celebrate that more than like mourning the loss. Isn't there going to be a new game that Toriyama worked on? Was he still working on that when, when this happened? But it'd be cool if we got a few more Toriyama works um, in the future. Ah! 
Okay, okay. Mm. Oh, Zig the Kid, hi! Hey, yeah, you're just in time. I'm about to get started um, continuing my playthrough of Diddy Kong Racing. I just want to take a moment to kind of like talk about Toriyama with the with the with my underwings. Mm. But yes, I, I hope everyone's doing well today, and I hope everyone has a nice, relaxing Friday and and weekend in general. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll let us hop over to the game screen and then we can get started. Well, okay. Mm. I should be able to just like pick up exactly where I left off last time. Um. Hold on, let me see if I can boot it up. Nice. Okay. I got this. Alright, let's hop on over, shall we? That's... Okay, so... Where is... Uh, my pillow cam and steering wheel? Yeah! This is ex literally exactly where I left off last stream. <laughs> okay. Alright, how's the volume compared to my voice? Same as usual. What did I think of the speedrun gameplay? Oh, it, it was really cool to see that, see like a human do that, because I only had I had only ever watched um, tool assistant speedruns. I am really curious. I wish I had thought to ask this uh, at the speedrunner that we rated. Um, is it is it possible to be walrus as Pipsy and, or Tip Top uh, without glitches? Wasn't even top level play. Yeah. <laughs> So last we left off, we had beaten the dragon. Now we have to do the silver coin challenges. Uh, and we can start with windmill planes. Windmill planes. Windmill planes. We're in wind windmill planes and we're riding windmill planes. Huh? Huh? Get it? Huh? <laughs> Ow. Okay, cool. So far, uh, it feels like the first track in every world has very basic um, silver coin placements, which is a good thing. Oh, I want that. I want that. Let's go. I want that. Oh, I miss. I'm missing two. Rats. I, I mean, we're a mouse, not a rat, but... You know the expression. I bet it's somewhere close to here. Oh, there's, there it is. I want that. Thank you. Oh, gospel, no problem. I just started where I left off. I'm in the first, um... I am in the first silver coin challenge. Go for it! Go for it! Okay, now we just have to win. So... Something interesting that they do is when you're when you're on the plane, uh, if you use the oil slick, instead it becomes a gas cloud. Come on! I don't think this is happening. Okay, I gotta be faster. Oh, okay, Zig the Kid, that's very cool to know. 
Uh, I wonder if I can retry the walrus fight just to try that out. So basically, the, you're, what you're saying is, um, I turn left and right really quickly, and it gives high speed. Nice. Yeah, I'll have to try it because that's the only part of the game that I have yet to ever beat as Pixie. Uh, Pipsy, I should say. Huh? Nice. one, and then the waterfall one, I think, is the last one. Nice. You're not sure how it works, but you just seen them do it. Oh, oh, it's, I'm grateful to know that it's possible. That's the important part. Oh gosh, the top three are so much faster than everybody else. Also use the jump button to steer quickly. Okay. Oh yeah, I am aware of that, Grace Stripe. It's one of this game's defining features for me. That you can let go of the gas before you hit a booster or use uh, a blue balloon. And it'll give you more speed. Maybe I need to start collecting bananas. Maybe that's the problem. that I'm missing. There's two magnets here. That could help. Me, huh? 
kills me. Eh, okay. Come on, Diddy. Just a little closer. I need this. Maybe if I hit him with a missile. Okay, it's just the one in the waterfall. Ah, dang it, I missed. <laughs> Here for the day today? Under the weather? Uh, so pausing the day? Oh, I hope you feel better soon, Yomi. We can hit the ground once, we just have to be on the ground. Okay, 
there. I'm missing one. And I believe it's this one. Yes. Let's go. I'm gonna go for it. that is the only plane level. I think all the rest are cards. Wait, no. One one is, um, Hovercraft. Oh, thank you for kick on ball. Alright, I'll take Sippy and Stretchy. And Sippy has been taken. <laughs> no, I shall stretch. Uh, oh. I can't spread my wings with the steering wheel out, so let's just say that I'm stretching my neck. Uh. Could try the attack on the hovercraft level? That's true! speak in normal English instead of that instead of the you know like
Okay, put Detour here. I'm not even sure if, I'm not even sure if that quote-unquote shortcut is shorter in any way. Is there one down here? Whoops. Get down there, please! Okay. Um, where's the last one? Okay, it's on the non-shortcut path. Shortcut. The alleged, alleged shortcut.
Don't look at Jet. Focus. Okay, get this one. Let me try the trick, the technique. physics outside the water. Let's go! 
Ow! Ow! Out of my way, please! Okay. Oh, first try, let's go! Woo! Yeah, it's, it's basically bumper cars. Oh my goodness. Log landfill might be a better name. Yeah! <laughs> There's no boulders in Boulder Canyon. It should be called Log Canyon. Uh, thanks everybody. Uh, My stone! We one have more, a new record! One more silver coin challenge. And then we have them all before facing Whizpig. But we have to fight the dragon afterwards again, too. Haunted Haunted Woods. Woods. And thankfully this last track is the shortest one of them all. So, retrying if we fail will be relatively simple. Oh, there's one more. Okay. These are easy positions. So with the dragon, will we be up to 40? Yeah, that track is very short. <laughs> that might be even shorter than Ancient Lake. Alright, let me take a sip real quick. Mm. Alright. <clears throat> Let's do this. This is not gonna be easy. Okay. Race the derg. He deploys those in a set pattern. So once you got the pattern down, then you're good to go. I think the balloon placements are different the second time around, too. Easy. 
easy. Practically first try. Ba -ba -ba. Excellent. You have earned a piece of the amulet. Now try the trophy challenge. A piece Goodbye. of the amulet. Yeah, they do cut you some slack with this boss. I'd say out of the four bosses, um, Octopus is probably hardest. W Walrus could be, depending on what character you pick. But Walrus also has a very short track. Um, My stone! So I'd say Octopus we is hardest, and then uh, Triceratops. And then Walrus, and then Dragon. All right, so trophy race next. Trophy race. Nice. Boulder Canyon. Boulder Canyon first? Really? I thought it'd be the plain one. That's just plain ridiculous. Huh? Huh? <laughs> Yeah, I could go straight to Whizpig, but I also, um, I want to get 100% so that after we beat Whizpig, we can go to the last world. <laughs> I closed the drawbridge on them. I hear them behind me. Please be gentle. Ow! No! Boulder Canyon without boulders. Nice. It's called Boulder Canyon because it was named before they mined all the boulders. That reminds me of um, a piece of like Warhammer lore that I remember from playing um, Total Warhammer back in the day. Um, so the dwarves in that setting they they hold they hold mean grudges against people to the point where their entire society is based around a, a big book of grudges. Um, <clears throat> And that, that, that plays into the gameplay mechanic, where if, like, an enemy faction attacks you when you're playing the dwarves, you have to respond to them, or else the, the dwarven citizens will be unhappy with you. So, they're, in lore, there was, they were constructing, like, their, 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 big, their biggest city, and there was, like, a big collapse inside the mountain that killed a bunch of dwarves. Since that incident, was not caused by anyone in particular, they decided to hold a grudge against the mountain itself. And they vowed that from that day onward, they would continue to mine that that mountain until it was nothing. <laughs> so, so, so the bit that you said about Boulder Canyon there kind of reminded me of that. <laughs> dwarves in that setting are so badass. I just like dwarves in general. I keep forgetting this isn't the Silver Coin Challenge, so I don't have to make that hard turn there. Ah! 
you took the thing I was gonna collect. shorts. Or well, I would t tell you to eat my shorts if Pipsy wore shorts. No. Oh, they're so far ahead. How did this happen? My skirt, yeah. <laughs> okay, we're still in the lead. So I have to remember this time, this is not the silver coin challenge, we can just gun it. some ban bananas so we can increase our top speed. Uh. <clears throat> I'm not sure if most of the rings are worth it because unless we hit it head on, there's a bit of a pause as we reorient ourselves forward. So that kind of like makes up for any boost that we would get. But thankfully Haunted Woods should be pretty easy. So we can use that to secure our point lead if we need to. It would be interesting if, during the trophy races, they actually had you play as the secondary vehicles in each map. But as it is, it's the exact same. I think that would have been a cool way to, like, vary, um, vary this part of the game. Because we have to play through each race pretty much three t separate times. Once normally, once during the Silver Coin Challenge, and again during the trophy race. So that would have been a cool way to add some variety. Maybe, like, for each one, even, they could make it so that, like, the first race is normal, the second race is in the alternate vehicle, and the third race is in a mirrored version of the course, maybe. Then again, the new game plus in this in this game, which is called Adventure 2, uh, I think that mirrors the courses. Yay! <laughs> Adventure 2 is harder? Yeah, it is. Not only because the AI is harder, um, and the tracks are mirrored, but because, um... Haunted Woods. They changed the positions of the silver coins to be even harder. No! Stop taking the bananas! This woohoo kills me. It's somehow so out of character and also very in character. should have had some tracks <clears throat> have more than three laps because this let this this course is begging it to be a five lap course i think that'd be a cool concept for a mod someday maybe 
Where you can have variable lap, lap length. Nice! Awesome! Alright, it's time. Time to face Wizpig. The four bosses have taught us well. <laughs> I'm still a fan of, of like, the idea that the bosses in the game, the four bosses, aren't really evil. But they just want to be absolutely sure that you're ready to face Wiz Wizpig because he... The last person who tried to face him was turned into a frog after they lost. Uh. Oh gosh! The, 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 the rock sculpture of Wizpig has turned into flesh. That's kind of creepy. According to Donkey Kong 64, Diddy wasn't in the mood here. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Return of Ganon. Alright, let's do this. Oh, right, the frog. I'll do it afterwards. Here we go. Oh, you can fly. <laughs> oh, he's moving. Whoops. Oh, no, it's over. When we're when we're Pipsy or Chip Top, we can't make any mistakes. Unless we use the glitch to kinda of like rapidly tap the gas pedal to increase our top speed. Like this. <laughs> well I have beaten him legit before without using that glitch. Dang it. Is it a glitch or a tack? I like to think of it as tack, honestly. But it's something that the game doesn't teach you, so... It's definitely very much unintended. Okay, so I have to remember that there's two there. Yeah, Wizpig has the strut. Another cool thing that the DS version added is that they let you play as Wizpig. But I think it's in a I think it's in a cart. I can't remember.
I got all of the boosters. Do I have to get green zooms? Is that the highest? Uh, I thought the, hi the highest was purple. <clears throat> so, like... <clears throat> I'm, I'm letting go of the gas right before I touch it. Should I not do that? <laughs> okay, green. Oh, I see. When I have rainbow exhaust after hitting the boost. Okay. I had no idea that the... That the now I, okay, now I remember. So it's the, it's, it's all about the timing so I don't do it right when I hit the booster. Oh, dig it. Hi. Hope you're doing well, buddy. <laughs> Come on the final boss. Okay. All about that timing. You got this, thank you. to pass on without him squishing us. I was worried I would slam into him. Oh, he's so fast! See, I bump into him, unless I can find a way around them. opportunity is to take the lead. This would also be a dope multiplayer track.
Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Got into the pit. It burns. My stones. We have a new record. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, Double Cakes. He's called Whiz Pig, not Win Pig. Party time! Yeah! <laughs> yeah, we're dancing! <laughs> this is the only time other than the character select screen where we actually see everybody else in their cards. Nice relaxing vacation. Oh. Okay. You already had your tantrum. And of course he has a freaking spaceship. Why is he shooting us? Why is he shooting us? Ah, oh, Wiz Pig, the sorest of losers. Fox, get this guy off me! See you later, worms! <laughs> Yeah, why don't they just leave the beach? <laughs> so, so as you can probably tell from that ending, we are not done. But we can roll through the credits and hear the nice music. Nice. Yeah, like you can tell they were really strapped for time with this game in some areas. Um, and a lot of the track designs uh, are very samey. They're the same kind of like closed circuit loop. But it's still just so charming to me. I, and I know like the silver coin challenges. I, I'm not really a fan of them either. <clears throat> but just like the overall aesthetic and the fact that they did something different than Mario Kart to kind of like give it its own identity. And between that and like David Wise's excellent soundtrack. It's just a nice experience that I like going back to every now and then. And as a kid, I never got 100%. Um, but like when I was a bit older, I did. And it blew my mind that there was an entire like other world waiting for us. Through the beach tracks now. Mm -mm. Let me take a sippy. Mm. Mm. But yeah, um, speedruns of this game are quite fascinating. Also, I have to remember to uh, unlock drumstick when we get back to the hub. Oh, thank you for the care combo. Okay, I'll do stretchy too. I never actually got the Secret World in Bomberman 64 as well. I think it'd be fun to play that um, one of these days too. Because I have fond memories of that game too. <laughs> I remember wishing that uh, the custom parts you could get for multiplayer would... Um, you could use in single player too. I wonder if there's a mod for that to make that work. Probably not. Diddy Kong Racing! Diddy Kong Racing. Okay. Let's go. Bat. Alright, so if I'm not mistaken, 
we have reached the requirements, so we have to find a frog with the with the rooster thing on its head. There he is. Uh -huh. <laughs> Free free drumstick. Now we can play as him if we want. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay, so the next order of business is that we need to go to the beach. Ah, Duminator! Thank you so much for the, uh, for subscribing. Ah, thank you for the five months. I appreciate your support. Oh, also, I need to get my stuff back. Yeah. Okay, so I believe you need to honk your horn here. No? There, okay, you have to go behind the billboard. <laughs> Alright. We just called our ride. This is this, this part of the game is so cool. Space now. This is the final world. And you can see the TT door here. Since we have the TT metal, we can access it. Hi there. I'm game status. Yep, we've got everything. And and okay. your name it's it's funny that you like act surprised at this dark moon, because I thought your new your username was a nod to this place. Because I there's a there's Right there, Dark Moon Caverns. Dark Moon's in the game. Okay, Space Dust Alley, I think, is the first one. Okay. Let's go! This is my favorite world in the game. Space Dust Alley. We're in space! There's no air in space, so why do the planes work? Who cares? Okay, we'll stack a few of these. Oh, it, it's got the perfect dark uh, choir in it too. <laughs> So your name, Dark Moon, is based off Castlevania. Nice. Ow! Whoa! Yes. I'm very glad that that didn't register as a collision. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, 
you. You had this game as a kid, but you never beat it. Yeah, me neither. This game is surprisingly difficult for for it for its like childlike aesthetic. Okay, so it looks like we can go back to Space Dust Alley right away for the Silver Coin Challenge, because there's no there's no like first boss here. Uh, you just have to do the, the, all the stages, then do the silver coins, and then um, face Whizping. So let's go to Dark Moon Caverns, shall we? like hairpin turns now where you have to be careful and look the loop so just like the fact that like a significant number of people who played Diddy Kong Racing back in the day did not access this set of tracks is is kind of sad because it, they, it's there's some of the best design tracks in the game Definitely a, definitely a worthy reward for 100% completion. Yeah, TZ, there are multiple uh, Sonic Roll S2 card mods um, with some of our characters in them. <laughs> hmm. And uh, actually, I, none of them were made by me. I did make a character pack for it, but it was other characters. Okay. Starport Alpha. in this track are tight enough that you should, like, use a trick to do barrels. Ah, 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 ah. Okay. Okay, we're good. It's like going through the trenches in Star Wars.
where you have to dip down and then dip back up. Like, if, if they did that for more of the plane courses, it'd really, like, separate them. Like, make them stand out compared to, like, the car and hovercraft ones. Because, like, for a lot of the courses where you ride as the plane, you go pretty much through the same route as, as um, the car route, except you're flying above it instead of through it. But here they get really creative with the with the plane route. Ah, ah! Uh, this ain't happening. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, trust the force. We can do that. I had no idea. Well, I remember now. That's just the first time that I've done that in this playthrough. Nice save. <laughs> oh my goodness. Dang it. Oh, that was close. Okay. Okay, we'll use this to protect ourselves in the trenches. when the camera changed? That would have been where this world's key was if there was a minigame for it. So, my guess is that they had planned for a key and minigame for this world, but, like, they couldn't do the time constraints. This is a joke. Oh, hello, normal, everyday person. Hope you're doing well. Remember playing this as a kid and being upset that you could never unlock the chicken? Yeah, I never unlocked drumstick as a kid, either. But I went back to the game as a teenager and I unlocked everything and it was so cool. Okay, so the last one is Star City. I wonder if the DS version has extra content. I didn't get that far in it. Star City. You're gonna get off the stream edge drive? No problem. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Did I ever unlock TT? Uh actually no. Not in any not at any point. So that could be something fun to try. <laughs> ow, ow, ow. What was that? Okay. Yeah, to get to unlock TT, you have to beat his ghost in every single track. Um, other than the space ones, I think. Which is quite a Herculean task, unless um, you use the trick to increase your top speed. Which that actually can make it a cinch. But it's just the tedium of having to go through every track a fourth time for the time trials. Oh, 
pa da pa na pa 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 pa. Since you played both Banjo and Conquer, you had to adapt to Tiny Kong instead. Oh, okay, yeah. Because of the DS version, swapping the characters around. Alright, so that's all of the courses normally, so now we get to do the Silver Coin Challenge. I wonder what's behind the TT door. Yep. Okay, we need 47 balloons. So we have to do everything else first. Space dust. Airplane. Ah. Oh, this is going to be an ordeal. I believe. I believe. Oh, oh, there's one down here. Since, since, you know, back then, the Nintendo 64, they had cartridges. They didn't, like, most, like, pretty much every, like, game creator for Nintendo 64 did not want to make a separate demo cartridge. Uh, so they would just let you play the full game in the store. And one time I just, like, spent, I spent hours just playing Banjo-Kazooie. 
Well, not hours, just like almost an hour. Okay. Dark Moon Caverns next. Yeah, I missed the old demo booth too. I also really have fond memories of when I was at Blockbuster and they had a demo booth for Pokemon Snap. And you could actually bring in your memory card and then like the like the demo station would print out uh, stickers with your photos on them. That was so cool. All right, Dark Moon Cavern, Silver Coin Challenge. In a video game store, you played through Metroid Zero Mission. Nice. sampler for the Sega Saturn. It had a bunch of really cool game demos on it. And then also we had demo discs um, for PC games before that. Um, well, they weren't CDs, they were floppy disks. And we got a floppy disk. My fondest memory was one of the floppy disks that had a bunch of, um, they had a bunch of like old like Apogee games on it. You know, like, 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 Wacky Wheels and Jazz Jackrabbit and all that. No, no, they called it the bootleg sampler, but it was two separate words. Bootleg. I think. But it was an official, it was an official thing. It's just, they named it like that to be edgy, I think. Cause, cause it was, it was the year of attitude, you know? It was the 90s. All the companies were trying to be like edgy bad boys. <laughs> okay. I think I recall one of the silver coin placements here being quite obnoxious. No, we're going back there. Okay, I'll, I'll remember that the next time around. There's one up there, too. 
Okay, okay, it's fine. We, we've accounted for all of them. Triple boost. No! Ah. Oh, I remember Math Blaster as well. There are some cool educational games back then. I also have fond memories of Triangle Trouble.
this one. We got them all. Silver coin challenge, and then we can beat my stone. Whiz Pig once we and for all. New Ooh, okay. I could try going through the TT door too to see what that's about. Star City. Star City. Silver coin challenge. Supposed to be going out for drinks, but you're delaying it so you can see the end. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. But feel free to leave any time that you need to. Because the VOD will always be waiting for you. Ah! Am I screwed? Yes. This is more fun anyway. Ah! <laughs> Just do normal boost here. Okay. I want that. I want that. I want that. Just one, and then we're done. Techniques that you need to use, but I imagine that some players who get to that point don't, and then they end up getting frustrated. So, oh, I see. We had to get the TT amulet. All right, the whiz pig door. Yep, I th yeah, I think that's every gold balloon as well. He's on a rocket now. Ganon 
has evolved into Andros, yeah. So this is basically Dragon Boss Round 2. But there's a lot of blue balloons, so it's very doable. <laughs> I missed. This is it, Luigi. I 
don't see anything. But I did notice there's an alcove here to the left. So it's gotta be here somewhere. Huh. There's a shield balloon before the throne room? Oh yeah, if I use my boost before then. is closed. We don't really slow down that much when we're hit by the lightning bolts. going in the alcove? Oh, oh, I see what's going on. Um, that's the wall that he busted through in the beginning and the opening scene right there. <laughs> so we can't pass through that. Some nice attention to detail, yeah! Wispig is slower on the rocket than he is on foot, ironically. But there's just so much else going on that you need to be careful of. Be careful of. Shield. 
no, 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 no. Shield this time. Oh, we almost got him. We almost got him. <laughs> yeah, I'll try fitting in homing missiles in the tunnel area. I also noticed he shared some voice clips with the dragon. I wonder if they have the same voice actor. Nice. Ah, uh, I missed. No! Okay. Yeah, so I guess. Using only tier three boosts is not the play. I could use double boosts and then uh, mix up, mix it up with some missiles. speed from those.
Oh, okay. Endlessly until he crashes into the moon. Okay. A victim of his own hubris. Classic villain flaw. Okay, now we get the good ending. Oh, they replaced his head with Taja's head. I wonder if, since Wizpig is a wizard, he must have magically transformed it from its original appearance. <laughs> oh, conga line. Yes, Timber Islands is returning to Harmony. Oh, Tricky has a family? I didn't know that. I did not know this. We're hanging out with Tricky. <laughs> yeah. And since we saved Jumpstick, he's there too. Ah. Poor Conker. He was so innocent back then. Yeah, <laughs> Timber gets to ride the dragon. And of course, Diddy Kong gets to show off because the game is named after him. Kind of a Wolverine situation there. Ah. So he's alive. <laughs> Someday he might return. Either that or he never got the chance to because everyone else preemptively stopped him outside of any game context. <laughs> uh, 
Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, I'm glad I got to play through this whole game again. Because it holds a special place in my heart. Because I have so many fond memories of, of playing it with my older brother growing up. Uh, uh, thanks. Thank you, thank you. So I think maybe we could just spend the rest of the stream uh, doing a chatty batty. And then I can do pixel art stuff next week, maybe. But yeah, like, it would be interesting to play through the DS version sometime and kind of compare it to this one. Because, like, despite my grievances of what they had to change in it, it is the more complete experience of the two. But there's just something really charming about seeing, like, an early version of Conquer and Banjo. Oh, thank you, Joker. Yeah, I'm a bat. Lorea, hi. Hope you're doing well. We just beat Diddy Kong Racing 100%. Uh, awesome. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, I heard the news, too. We were actually t um, reminiscing, uh, b like, in the 15 minutes before I started playing uh, today. We were talking about our favorite experience, like, our experiences with, uh, like, Dragon Ball growing up, as well as everything else that Toriyama worked on, like Dragon Quest and Chrono Trigger and all that. Uh. But yeah, like, the response has been, like, universal. Like, literally everybody I follow on Twitter has, has talked about it in some way. Because it's, it's a monumental loss. Can I call it 100% without TT Unlocked? I guess that's true. Oh, are those our times or the the TT times? Alright, I'll take Sippy and Stretchy. Oh, okay, those are the dev times. Yeah, to be continued. <laughs> that hurts to see in in, in the, the modern age. Yeah, it would've been cool to see how they continued it, like, if, if they were to continue, like, right from this point, rather than re retooling it, it, it into Donkey Kong Racing. It would've been cool to see what they did with Donkey Kong Racing, too, honestly. Oh, Obsidian Oni, hi! Hope you're doing well. Your cousin played this one time, and everyone was watching and cheering, and it made you want to play video games a lot more. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you for sharing that with us. Everyone's got that game. That one game they played as a kid that, like, really, like, sparked their enthusiasm for playing more games. And this was, this, this game was after that time for me, but this is still one of my fondest Nintendo 64 memories. Yeah! Alright, let's hop over to the Chatty Betty screen, shall we? Matt! Okay. Alright, I'm gonna save this and quit. Nice. Yours was the Need for Speed games? Awesome! For me, I think it was Sonic. Um, kind of a combination between, like, you know, the greats, like, like Sonic and Mario and all that, and Mega Man. But I think, like, Sonic and Mega Man were my biggest. Which makes sense, because those are the two games that, like, th that, like, the games that I've worked on. Um, those are the two games that, like, where you can tell, like, that was the biggest inspiration. Um. Mm. Uh, okay. So, so, okay, so that's how that worked. So, they had plans for an actual sequel to, um, Diddy Kong Racing. But that ended up ended up being um, becoming becoming banjo pilot for the Game Boy Advance. That's interesting. I haven't played that, or I haven't really seen any gameplay or anything really. But the few screenshots that I have seen, uh, they do kind of remind me of the Diddy Kong Racing style. Hmm. Uh. Oh my gosh, that one was a flop. Was Miyamoto warned rare? Oh, okay, okay. 
Yeah, it's really interesting to think about like the companies that have come and gone over the years. Um, Rare is not really like they don't really make games anymore. Um, like that, that they, they've basically been like, like they basically like been um, merged into Microsoft, I suppose. Uh, so for you, real person, it was Sonic Rush, Pokemon Platinum, Mario Galaxy, and Smash Bros. Brawl. The Subspace Emissary mode especially. Oh my goodness, yeah, yeah, those are some good ones. Yeah, it's it's always interesting to um, to learn what era of gaming that people grew up, grew up in, just from what their favorite memories are. And like, like so, so if like, in that case, I can tell that you grew up like in the Wii era, Wii DS. Yeah, for me, I'm I'm one of the ancient ones. I uh, my my dad um had a back room uh where he had like a ham radio station. He was actually one of the very first people to use the internet. He actually helped like bring it together. Um, back when like people were still communicating through ham radio, uh, he actually used that um in order to communicate with astronauts uh from NASA, and. He got some really cool photographs of the moon landing out of it that he still has. It'd be really cool to like take photos of those sometime next time I'm at his house. But yeah, he was one of the pioneers of the internet back when it was used for mostly academic purposes. He also had a Commodore 64, uh, which was one of the earliest uh, video game consoles. And I remember, um, I remember he played, um, he's not a gamer at all. He still isn't. He never was, <laughs> but he did play a lot of the the the, the demo of of Doom uh, on PC as well, and he just like spent so much time like memorizing every single level, the placement of every enemy, every item, every weapon, um, and he, he he eventually he beat like the the two the, the two barons at the end of the demo, and then you like you cross that platform, and then the game kills you. And then it has that message about like, what the heck is this? It's not supposed to end this way. Th that was kind of a cheeky thing that they did to kind of encourage you to buy the full version. But he thought that was the end of the game. And he was like, OK, OK, I guess games aren't really for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, the C64, I think, was the very first like gaming console that I touched. I don't really have any any memories of it, really, other than like, I think it had like a few like coloring book programs that I played around with. There was one about like a like a T-Rex that had a birthday party and you could choose what the T-Rex looked like. Um, you, you only had two choices for each stop. You could choose what its eyes looked like. Uh, you could choose what its teeth looked like. Um, and then I think you could choose how big its tail was or something. <laughs> I, I remember playing that a few times, but my first actual like con uh, console that I like owned was a Nintendo Entertainment System, um, and then of course I had the uh, the Goal for forty six Packard Bell. That was my very first computer with Windows three point one and MS DOS, and then I, I like played I played so many DOS games as a kid. And, and my parents got me a few different, like, compilation CDs that had, like, tons of, like, DOS and Windows 3.1 games on them. I spent so much time playing those. Oh my gosh. I must have played, like, it felt like I played thousands of games, but in reality it was probably more like a few hundred. But still, oh my goodness. I actually still have, um, like, one of the CDs they gave me, which was, like, a... It was, like, a... I almost felt like a bootleg CD almost where it had like it was it, 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 it advertised itself as having over a thousand games. There were a lot of duplicates on there, but I I remember playing through so many of them and there were some bangers in there. There were also some really crappy ones and also some ones that were so weird that they kind of like scared me. Um, and there were a few games in particular that were made with this program called Click and Play and I knew that because when you closed the game, there was an advertisement um, that popped up that said like, oh, this game, this game was made with click and play. Uh, would you like to create your own games? Uh, like, and then they had like order information. And I, I begged my parents to get it. And that was the start. That was the start of me making games. That happened when I was like, um, I was, I want to say like 10, 11 years old. But oh my gosh, that was so long ago. It felt like a lifetime ago. 
You remember Elfie, an early piece of Hello Kitty storybook software? Nice! Yeah, I remember those kinds of storybook adventures as well. Uh, my... I think the one that I remember the most vividly was Arthur's birthday. I, I used to like, like, scour that for, for anything I can interact with on each page. Um... Oh my gosh, Joker, you're gonna be playing X-Men Legends 2 for eight hours straight? Ah, I wish you the best of luck. Mama. Okay, so Waterblad grew up during the N64 PS1 era. Mario 64 and Banjo-Tooie were some of your favorites. Let's go! The 64 era, I think, was very special for a lot of people. Um, even, even for those who were kind of like, who kind of like grew up in the era before that, like me. 64 PS1 was super special because it was the big leap to, th to 3D. The first actual proper 3D games, like fully fledged, like in terms of they had as much content as like, you know, like like Genesis and Super Nintendo games, perhaps more. It, it was probably like, to my knowledge, to my memory, it, it felt like the biggest like technological leap like ever. I don't think any other like console generation um, transition has hit quite as hard as that. It was so cool. It was so cool. I feel blessed to have grown up, um, and seen, like, like, the game industry in its very earliest stages and then where it is now. I feel like we're past that point where I don't think there's going to be any more, like, big surprises in terms of, like, technological breakthroughs. Um, I think we've reached the limits of what, like, the human mind can perceive in terms of, like, you know, like, resolution and graphical fidelity. Um, from this point onwards, I think it's the art direction that matters more for a game. So, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, you can do a lot with a little. Like, if you look, you look back on those early 3D games during the N64 PS1 era, and as long as you give your eyes time to adjust, you can still immerse yourself in those worlds just because like the art direction is so solid and like they had like such clever techniques to kind of like um capture like the aesthetic they were going for uh you played the c64 first as well oops let's go i didn't i don't <coughs> i don't think i ever played it i just kind of like messed around with it a few times You hope the T-Rex had an awesome party? Oh, he did every time. Uh, you got in the gaming house with the Game Boy Color, PS1 and N64? Nice. Uh, uh, Stardust Nebulas was either the Dreamcast or GameCube. Those were really good uh, ones. Like, the leap in graphical fidelity from N64 to GameCube, um, it was nothing to sneeze at. Like, I remember, I have very fond memories of that leap forward as well. Um, because a lot of N6 games in the N64 era had to run at 30 frames per second. So, like, the fact that we went to the game from N64 to GameCube and now all of a sudden, like, everybody's faces were, like, fully modeled and, like, the, the games were buttery smooth. When we got the GameCube, my bro older brother and I, when we brought it home, I still remember the day we brought it home. And... We got everything set up. The first game we put in was Super Smash Brothers Melee. And we had already seen um, footage of the game at like demo stations and stuff. But just, just seeing that in our living room on our TV was just like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. We spent so many days, so many fond memories playing Melee. It took us a really long time to, um, to figure out how to unlock Mewtwo and by extension everyone else after him. Um, well, thankfully, at that point, the internet was starting to kind of, like, evolve into, like, a true social network. So, like, I was a part of, like, Smashboards. Like, like, Smashboards was, 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 was around back in the early days of Melee. It looked totally different, but it was there. And <laughs> we, we used that as our kind of, like, our, a, a kind of, like, a way to look up what we were supposed to do in order to unlock certain things. Oh my gosh, yeah. You started with a DS real person? Nice. Ah. Oh, Gospel, you, you remember Space Cadet 3D. <laughs> oh, 
noise. If yes, TP and V, your first console was Sega Genesis. Nice. We had a lot of them. Um, we had NES, we had Super Nintendo, we had uh, Sega Genesis, we had Game Boy, we had Game Gear. Um, we had N64, PS1. Um, we had Dreamcast, we had Xbox, we had um, GameCube, PS2, PS1. Huh. Yeah. Remember playing Sonic CD for the first time? Because you had a Sega PC CD collection box. Oh, cool. I never played... The only Sonic game that I had played on PC growing up was Sonic 3D Blast. And I... I had played it first on the Sega Genesis, so when I played it on PC, I was like, oh, this is cool. This has a different soundtrack and, it, and better graphics. My PC ran it super slowly, actually, and that actually made the game more enjoyable for me because I could actually see where I was going. But the game ran at, like, half speed. On my PC because it was because my PC wasn't powerful enough, but that actually helped me get through the entire game, and it was it was it was it was a nice time. Like back then, I wasn't really like concerned about like going fast or anything like I am today. Like my perception of time was not uh, what it was today. Melee flexing so much that they let you take pictures. Oh yeah, I remember that too. Yeah, I've owned uh, every Smash Bros. except for Brawl. Uh, Brawl, I had to play at a friend's house. Um, but I did eventually get my own copy of Brawl. But when it first came out, I had to miss out on it. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> Played a lot of quite a bit of Space Cadet Pinball. I liked the sound design in that game. I remember like swiping some of its sound effects. Um, what? Wait, why? Why is... Why do I hear Paige barking outside? No, that's not Paige. I heard a dog barking outside that, that sounded exactly like Paige's barks. And I was like, oh, how did she get out? But no, no, no. She just heard that other dog and now she's barky. Now she's barky. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh gosh. I, I had a mini, mini dog mama heart attack. Oh, I'm glad she's okay. Oh, Super Mario fan. Hi. Hi, hi. Yeah, we heard the news. We were talking about it early in the stream. Just, like, reminiscing about our fondest memories with, like, like how we, fir how we first, like, learned of Dragon Ball and, and all that. Uh, so, real person, your first exposure to games, you think, when was visiting a friend's house. And they had multiple Sega Genesis games on one cartridge. Oh, oh, I remember that compilation. It was like a multi-pack that had Sonic 1, Sonic 2, and Dr. Robotnik's Me Bean Machine. Tata. Thank you for the invincibility. Thank you, thank you, Pudding Pensu. Yeah, like, the first time I locked um, Sonic and Knuckles on the Sonic 3 was such, such an experience. It just combined both games. Like, the fact that I had both of these full Sonic games, and I could combine them and make them into one huge adventure? I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> So all things considered, even though that wasn't Sega's original plan to have the lock-on technology, it's still like a nice part of history. And of course, nowadays we have um, the Sonic Origins collection, which, like, by default, it combines both games. I don't even think there's an option to play Sonic 3 by itself. Ah, puppies! Puppies! Paige! Yeah, like... Paige will calm down on her own if she's barking at the wind or if someone just walks by the house. But if there's another dog out there, she will not stop until I tell her to. <laughs> Paige! Paige! Like, like, even like, like, if the dog has been gone for half an hour, she will still be, be barking if there's no one to stop her. Oh, you had an arcade thing with Namco arcade games? Yeah, 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 for 
for my stepmom's birthday, I gave her one of those arcade one-up um, Pac-Man machines. Those are fun. I get that they're not the authentic experience, and I do like the, the more tactile feel of the original arcade cabinets, but I do appreciate one, Arcade 1-Up for making, like, more affordable cabinets for, for people to have in their houses. And it's, you know, it's good enough. It's got the clicky clacky. And there are, there are ways you can mod the, um, the cabinet to kind of, like, feel a bit more authentic. And you can even mod more games in them if, um, if, if you want. Um... But I do appreciate that those are an option because, like, authentic cabins are not only very heavy and thus expensive to ship, but they're just ex expensive in general to buy. I also appreciate them for doing the same for pinball machines. Because authentic pinball machines, uh, they have a lot of parts. And if one part breaks, you can't play it. And, like, getting specific replacement parts, it's, it, it's such a pain in the neck to, to, I imagine, to go in, to, like, tear open a pinball machine in order to fix it. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 real person. The Star Wars one. That's the one that, that, um, like, I think, like, last year, my dad got the Star Wars arcade one-up pinball machine. And I played that, and it, it felt really good to play. Like, I like how it has the haptic feedback, where, like, depending on what you hit in the game, on the digital display, um, it has, like, little, like, knobs and stuff inside the, the machine that will, like, flick and stuff to make it actually feel like, like, you're playing a physical pinball machine. It's so cool! Um... You played a lot on PC, too? Yeah, me too. I was a PC gal growing up. Uh... Oh, you wonder if Toriyama's Dragon Quest slimes were an influence behind the chow? No, don't you mention it? I mean, you can't really own the design for, like, a droplet head, but I can see the similarity. Wish you had room for an arcade one-up? Honestly, yeah, same. I don't have as much room um, in this home than, than, than I did in my previous home, so I, I would struggle to find a place for a cabinet. Even one of the smaller cabinets they make that are meant for desktops, um, I'm not sure if I would be able to have the space for it. Because, like, I, I have to use every, like, every bit of space that I have in my office and bedroom matters. And Paige is giving a speech. She's like, my fellow doggos, there is another doggo outside. I must say hello to them. Help me say hello to the other doggo. Paige! Paige, come! Paige, come! Paige! Paige, come! Paige! Paige! There you are! Paige, come here. It's okay. It's okay, honey. Okay, yeah, she's- she's, uh, she's at my feet now. She just kind of, like, came in with her tail between her legs. She's like, am I in trouble? No, 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 you just gotta be a little quiet. You gotta be a little quiet, okay? Yeah? You want to get on mommy's lap for the rest of the stream? Here, here you go, Paige. Paige, come on. Come on. She's like, no, I want to keep barking at the dog. <laughs> <sighs> okay, okay, okay. All right, let me take some being stretchy. Thank you for that. Oh my goodness. Oh, you played Star Wars 1998 at Chuck E. Cheese? I've never been to a Chuck E. Cheese. I, I wanted to go as a kid so badly, but they never had any in my area. Because I remember, like, they ran commercials all the time when we were watching cartoons, and I was like, oh, I want to go! But no, no, the nearest Chuck E. Cheese was, like, two hours away, and that would just not be worth it. I do remember going to a place that was kind of like a Chuck E. Cheese's, but it wasn't. It was more of a local area. Um, it was kind of like one of those places um, where you could kind of like get something to eat and also like like play laser tag or play on game consoles and stuff. Um, funnily enough, they had kiosks there with um, Philips CDI in them. Like seriously. And some of the CDI, uh, some of the CDI kiosks were playing this like educational game where you can kind of like, like, make different colored crayons and draw and stuff. 
but there was also a CDI that uh, kiosk that was running Hotel Mario. <laughs> and I was like, what? What is this Mario game? I haven't seen this before. But we didn't understand because like it's just like it was just like the N64 kiosk back in the day where it was just a full game. So we had no idea how we were supposed to play. We just like like ran around um, the different floors and played around with opening and closing the doors. But we didn't understand that that the, the goal was to close all, all the doors. So after a while, we just like we just left it and we were like, oh, OK, I guess like we don't know how to play this. <laughs> oh, hi, Saturn. Hope you're doing well. Well. Mm. But yeah, I can't believe that. Like, I thought it was a fever dream. Until... Until I got older and I learned that uh, the Philips CDI games were actually a thing. You know, the, the early days of YouTube poop. And then I was like... And I was like, wait a second, this is unlocking a memory. And then I was like, oh yeah, the laser tag plays. <laughs> I was like, what? Why would a laser tag place with pizza and stuff? Why would they have the CDI kiosks? <laughs> I'll have to see if I can like really look into that sometime and see if there actually were. I I distinctly remember it playing. I I distinctly remember seeing Hotel Mario in a public setting. You went to Chuck E. Cheese on your ninth birthday once, Kiri? You got in the ball pit and. All the other kids were throwing the balls at you, like targeting you for no reason. Never been, went back to the ball pit when you were a kid. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah, I... Yeah, kids can be mean. I've, I've had pretty decent memories of ball pits. <laughs> Mostly from local McDonald's places, when they still had the play places. But from what I've heard from other people, they got rid of those because of, like, hygiene issues. And it just was too much work to, um... To keep those like maintained and clean while also um being able to like you know like wait on people and serve food and you know like as time goes on they need to they want to like like do what they still do but with as few employees as possible so they're just like at some point it was just impossible to have play places anymore but, oh my goodness yeah unlocking a core memory <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the CDIs. I wonder what that other game was that I was actually, like, playing and getting into. Like, it was it was some kind of, like, coloring drawing program. Um, speaking of rare arcade finds, did you know Antrax Coast Starlight had a small arcade in its trains for a time? <laughs> that sounds really cool. And I actually, um, one of my friends took me to a Dave & Buster's uh, a couple years back, and they were like the only, the only like Dave and Buster's that had um, a copy of like the unreleased Ghostbusters arcade machine. Like, if I'm not mistaken, like that's the only like that's the only like machine of that unreleased Ghostbusters game that's actually in active operation. So that was kind of an interesting factoid. I mean, I don't know really, I don't really know anything about like arcade machines. So, so I was just like, oh, interesting. Rather than, whoa! You discovered the Naomi Dreamcast game, Zero Gunner 2, when you played it on the train. Oh, cool! What game am I going to go for next after Diddy Kong Racing? I think it depends on what I've got going on next week. Um, if I have no other plans, and if it's if I'm not, like... Yeah, if I have no other plans, I'm thinking next week could be uh, Monkey Week. Where I could play Donkey Kong 64, um, the new Super Monkey Ball game, uh, which is... Is it Banana Blitz? The one that brings back, like, the, the old courses from the first game? Um, and then uh, Ape Escape uh, for the PS1. You miss playing games on the Dreamcast? Oh, yeah. Mm, that might be fun. Mm. Oh, it's Banana Mania. Oh, right, 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 right. That's the one where you can play as Sonic, right? Sonic, Tails, Kiryu, uh, the Dreamcast. Monkey. Monkey. But if it's not Monkey Week, uh, I have a few other ideas. I could I could play A Hat in Time. Uh, I've had several friends beg me to play that. <laughs> and it's funny because I backed their Kickstarter, so I was one of the earliest people to receive a copy of the game. Um, but I still have not played it. Oh. 
I, I, I feel like that's that that's kind of like cursed salt. Yeah, I'd love to play that. Uh Paige, honey. The dog has been gone for like 15 minutes. <laughs> Paige. Now she's doing the thing where she's like. Woo. 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 And then she'll slowly raise the volume of her voice to see what she can get away with. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my gosh, this was a cold conversation. Um, I'm getting a ping. And it's just.